call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Liz Smith. Presiding officer, while doing everything we can to ensure Scotland's a place where there's zero tolerance of hate crime, we have to ensure that we strike the right balance between respecting, protecting and upholding all rights, including free speech. Not an easy or simple task, but this bill provides the opportunity to do that by consolidating, modernising and extending hate crime in Scotland. With complex problems, with contentious issues and challenges, it's helpful to start with principles with areas of agreement. I don't think that anyone in this chamber disagrees that hate crime is a blight on our society that requires a criminal justice response. Crimes driven by hatred and prejudice have deep social consequences, with not just the physical and psychological damage to the victim of the crime, but also to the group the victim belongs to and to our wider community as a whole. For example, where disabled people don't feel they can go out at all or avoid places like town centres, leisure facilities or public transport, it seriously impacts on both their physical and mental health and well-being, and in turn, our wider community as their talents and contributions are missed. I also agree freedom of expression is a cornerstone of democracy. We should not be complacent about its protection. Freedom of expression is protected by Article 10, and as John Finney said, this freedom carries with it duties and responsibilities and can legitimately be subject to conditions, restrictions or penalties in the interest of, amongst other things, public safety and the prevention of disorder or crime. President Officer, a number of my constituents have raised concern about freedom of expression, particularly in relation to their faith. Um, I understand their anxiety when there are those who consider themselves to be progressive and inclusive, yet appear entirely intolerant to those with differing faith and beliefs to themselves. I have to say that at the moment, in regard to stirring up, I agree with the Humanist Society of Scotland when they say, charges under the bill on stirring up as is currently drafted would not take into consideration intention. Consequently, this could unintentionally criminalise behaviour that should be protected under the right to free expression. This could seriously hinder important discourse about emotive subjects like religion, race and sexual identity in Scotland, halting progress and stifling free expression. To progress as a country, we have to have that discourse. At the moment, we have a situation where women campaigning to uphold their sex-based rights are routinely accused of hate, of their words being violence. As this bill progresses, they'll require reassurance that their right to organise, gather, speak and campaign will not be criminalised. Sex-based hate is excluded from this bill. I appreciate the complexity and differing views around how best to approach misogyny from a criminal justice perspective. And I do welcome the Scottish Government's commitment in principle to develop a standalone offence of misogynistic harassment. Um, I think it would be reassuring for women if the Cabinet Secretary could say in closing uh, when the group will begin work and who will be on it. How long will um, female victims need to wait for that? Human... Yes. Liam. I can actually assist um, because I asked that very question uh, just recently. The Cabinet Secretary answered on the 27th of August uh, by saying the priority for the Scottish Government at this stage is to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, the work to establish the working group is currently paused. Now, given that, doesn't that rather make my case that uh, th there are very important issues that are being postponed here that we actually need to get right back now to make sure we deal with here and now? Ruth McGuire. Thank Liam Kerr for that intervention. I'll come to that in a bit, but in short, no, I don't think it does uh, make your case. Um, human rights are not a hierarchy. Um, they can and they do come into conflict. It does no one, let alone those at risk or vulnerable, any favours to try and pretend otherwise. Uh, when and where that happens, we as parliamentarians have a duty to do the work, the difficult and sometimes uncomfortable work, to ensure that we have legislation that protects our citizens, all of our citizens, and upholds rights. Our parliamentary process is the place for that to happen. I don't accept that the large, um, huge level of responses to the Justice Committee consultation are a sign that we should abandon that work. I think to do that would be a dereliction of duty. Quite the opposite. The volume of interest and engagement is an indication of the importance of this bill, the importance of cross-party committee working, and the bill process. All members of all parties need to put their shoulder to the wheel and do the work that we are sent by our communities here to do. Presiding officer.